Next we have uh, Jeannie Deal, um, Michigan Safe Technology, opposes a bill and wishes to speak. Jeannie? Good afternoon. How are you doing? Janine, sorry. It's okay. Um, good afternoon, Senators. I am in deep opposition to Senate Bill 637 because it strips away our rights to protect our health, our family's health, our property, our privacy. It also strips away local authority giving rights to telecom companies that should be preserved as the rights of the people. The human body normally functions by using natural electromagnetic energy. And humans are electromagnetic beings. Thus, we are affected by electromagnetic fields in our environment. Originally called radio wave or microwave sickness, electrosensitivity is a medical condition brought on by microwave or wireless radiation. Electrosensitivity was recognized in radio, radar, and electricity workers in the 1930s through the 1950s when the military began using the symptoms of electrosensitivity as a basis for military electronic warfare. Currently, the US Army uses microwave radiation 95 gigahertz, that's just five gigahertz up from uh, the wireless spectrum that this technology, that this, these uh, small cell wireless facilities uh, will enable. Uh, the US military is using 95 gigahertz as a biological weapon called the active denial system and you can all Google that if you wanna know what, more about that. In the 1960s and 70s, it was discovered that microwaves have an effect on hearing the blood-brain barrier, suicide, and cancer. And in the 1980s, electrosensitivity spread further into the general population alongside the rise in use of computers, cell phones, links with DNA breaks, melatonin, and Alzheimer's. In 2000, electrosensitivity was classified as a disorder and given an ICD code. The possibility of non-thermal harm, such as cancer, was accepted. It is also recognized in workers' compensation and diagnosis protocols. There have been over 8,000 8, peer-reviewed scientific studies done on health effects from wireless radiation. And there is a genetic component to it. Basically, one lacks the full spectrum of the full genetic complement to detoxify adequately. Experts are currently determining if radio frequency and extremely low frequency should be elevated to a class one human carcinogen. So what's going on here is totally backwards. The safety of this technology has not been demonstrated. In fact, quite the opposite. And the burden of proof is yours. our legislators, and telecoms, not the publics, not the public whom you are charged to protect. Where is the proof that long-term exposure to small wireless communication facilities will have absolutely no effect on babies, children, and our delicate ecosystem. Do you know? Because I certainly haven't seen it. What I have seen is thousands of people worldwide suddenly and unexpectedly becoming sick after levels of radiation in their environment increased, often without their knowledge or consent. So these are people who are getting sick and not knowing why and then discovering something has changed in their environment. I have seen hundreds of scientific peer-reviewed studies done on health effects from microwave radiation that mirror my experience 
and the experience of thousands of others. I don't use wireless technology. I discovered in 2013 I could no longer hold a cell phone to my head because of constant pain and burning it caused. We are the evidence that wireless radiation causes harm. Are you going to continue to ignore us and cater to the wireless industry? Or will you please table Senate Bill 637 and declare a moratorium on this rollout of 5G technology until human safety testing is done and is conclusive, independent from industry? Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Any questions? No? Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.